Welcome back to KC Talks EV and yes it's finally time to do the range test on the BYD Seal. This model is the excellent trim so it has an 82.5 kilowatt hour total capacity lithium iron phosphate pack and 323 miles of WLTP range. It is also the dual motor model so we do lose a tiny bit of range compared to the design trim which is only rear wheel drive. There are two things I probably should mention. First of all, this vehicle is quite new, so that means therefore that the available capacity may not be as accurate as it could be, um, but I hope that the efficiency statistics should be still accurate. The other thing to mention is I'm not starting from 100% state of charge, I'm actually starting from 96% state of charge, but that shouldn't affect the results because we are going to be driving a pretty fair distance and therefore actually run down the battery pack a bit. Today's weather conditions are 21 degrees Celsius with a headwind on the way out towards um, Manchester and then on the way back we will have a tailwind. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so um, we've basically ticked over 50 miles now, average speed of 64 miles per hour. And unfortunately, this car doesn't give efficiency in miles per kilowatt hour. I will put it in the table. So we're looking at 25.8 kilowatt hours per 100 miles for the first 50 miles. I'm now going to reset the trip computer again. Okay, but I'm not going to reset the average speed. So let's see how much we get. Okay, so 100 miles in, average speed of 65 miles per hour, um, about an hour and a half of driving time as well, and 29.1 kilowatt hours per 100 miles in terms of efficiency, which isn't too bad. I did um, climb over the highest point of the M62, and I've probably still got a bit of elevation to um, left over. So I guess at this point in time, it's all the way down, and um, well, let's find out what the efficiency will be. Okay, so we've just reached the 150 mile mark. I have picked up my average speed to 66 miles per hour and efficiency 31.8 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. So we're going to finish up the test right now and then we will go to the conclusion. Okay, so the range test is now complete. By the way, this is a few days afterwards. So if you're wondering why it's the same setting as the impressions video, well, there we go. And um, I do have the results here. So we ended up arriving with 40% state of charge, meaning that we used 56% of the battery and we covered a total of 151 miles. We averaged 65 miles per hour, which is definitely one of the higher um, average speeds on any range test that I have covered. And actually, if you take the average from the three results at every 50 miles, I was taking the um, efficiency and then resetting the um, efficiency counter, you get an average of 3.48 miles per kilowatt hour. I think that's actually okay um, for a vehicle of this size. I'm not quite sure exactly what a Tesla Model 3 would do, or uh, Model 3 performance, in order to get the 
you know, similar specification levels. I'm not quite sure exactly how it would do on this test, but bear in mind, as you saw from the footage, it definitely wasn't, um, you know, lounging about. It was definitely stick it at 70 miles an hour and keep it there for the majority of the journey. Now, if you actually do a bit of extrapolation and do some calculations, you end up with an available capacity of 77.5 kilowatt hours. There will be some level of heat loss, obviously, in the battery. And I believe BYD quotes 82.5 kilowatt hours in terms of the actual battery pack size. Unfortunately, I don't know whether or not this is usable, or whether it's total capacity. So 77.5 kilowatt hours actually seems okay, and that would be the usable capacity. So maybe they are quoting total capacity. Um, if I am right in saying, I believe with the Atto 3 and the Dolphin, they were pretty close as well. Um, I think it was like 59 kilowatt hours or something, and they do quote 60.48 kilowatt hours. So yeah, that sounds about right to me. Finally, if you then do the full extrapolation, so you take the 77.5 kilowatt hours of total available capacity, multiply it by 3.48 miles per kilowatt hour, you end up with a theoretical 100% down to 0% range of 269.6 miles, or as close to 270 miles. And compared to the WLTP range of 323 miles, we are looking at a combined percentage of that of 83.4%. Now that is actually a pretty reasonable score, um, especially for a test like this. I've tended to notice that my range tests tend to be quite harsh on electric vehicles, so uh, when I mean your mileage may vary, I wouldn't be surprised if you would be able to get a little bit more. Now, in comparison to things like the BYD Atto 3, actually slightly better because of the higher average speed, makes sense because it's got a more aerodynamic shape. BYD, in a lot of the specifications, actually discusses a 0.219 drag coefficient, which is actually very, very low. There is one thing I will mention. Um, on all of my range tests, I always use the cruise control, and that is to maintain some level of consistency. I set the cruise control to 70 miles an hour. I might use the lane keep assist from time to time as well on the test, but most of the time I am not actually um, handling the throttle and I've just got my foot on the brake for safety reasons. Now, there is one thing that I should mention and on this test, I think BYD could definitely eke out a significantly more efficiency. I briefly mentioned it on the impressions video actually that the cruise control isn't particularly that great. Now, it will absolutely maintain 70 miles an hour or 60 miles an hour that you set, even if it accelerates marginally too much and slightly over whatever your target speed is, what it will do is it will immediately regen and it will regen pretty hard as well. Now, that is not actually particularly that efficient, um, but once you then lose speed, you then have to accelerate again and that uses obviously a lot more power. I have a feeling that if, for example, BYD fitted it with a speed limiter, so that's something that my Hyundai Ionic has to make sure that you don't, you know, overspeed, etc., but still have the ability to lower your speed a little bit, you would get significantly more efficiency out of it. I wouldn't be surprised if in those weather conditions, it would actually be able to do WLTP combined range. So overall, yeah, not too bad score, in my honest opinion, not too bad efficiency. By the way, you can have a look at all of my range tests on all of the individual videos, but also on kctalkseev.com, where I do have a range test page, and you can have a look at all of those on there. So I think that is pretty much it. So if you found this video informative, please give it a like, dislike it if you didn't. Leave a comment below to let me know your thoughts on the efficiency of the BYD seal. I think it is fairly comparable to a lot of the vehicles um, that this is competing with. But I think that is pretty much it. So thank you for watching, and talk to you later.